looking for magic cards at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code lvd to get a 10 percent discount on orders over ten dollars and starting from now you also get entered into the gills of ravnica booster box giveaway which runs until october 5th hello and welcome to another patreon bonus video this week we're taking a look at counters company in modern a creature based combo deck that's running collected company so let's take a quick look at all the different combos that are available in the deck since there's more than one so the most straightforward combo is Devoted Druid combined with Vizier of Remedies to make infinite mana. So Devoted Druid's a 2 mana 0-2 that can tap to add green mana. And we can also put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on Devoted Druid to untap it. And if we also have a Vizier of Remedies in play, which says if one or more minus 1 minus 1 counters would be put on a creature we control, that many minus 1 minus 1 counters minus 1 are put on it instead. So instead of putting one minus one minus one counter on the Voted Druid to untap it, we don't have to put any minus one minus one counters on it. So the Devoted Druid can keep tapping and untapping and make infinite green mana. And with that infinite green mana, we can either just straight up cast a Walking Ballista big enough to kill the opponent on the spot. Or if we don't have Walking Ballista available, we can cast a Court of Calling, which can then search up a Duskwatch Recruiter. So Court of Calling X equals 2, search up Duskwatch Recruiter, which is a creature with an activated ability that lets us take a look at the top three cards of our library, and if we find a creature we can put it into our hand, so we can activate the Duskwatch Recruiter's ability indefinitely until we find a Walking Ballista, and then we can cast Walking Ballista and kill the opponent. So that's the most straightforward combo we have available. Then the second combo in the deck involves Vizier of Remedies, alongside a Sacrifice Outlet like Viscera Seer, and a Persist Creature like Kitchen Things or Murderous Ratcap. So the Persist Creatures get quite a bit better with a Vizier of Remedies in play. Taking a look at Kitchen Things, a 3 mana 3-2 that gains to life when it enters the battlefield, and has Persist. So if Kitchen Things died and did not have a minus one minus one counter on it, then we get to return it from the graveyard to the battlefield with a minus one minus one counter on it, and of course we get to gain the two life again. But with a Vizier of Remedies in play, the Persist will not put a minus one minus one counter on Kitchen Things, so it can keep coming back from the graveyard into play. So if we then also have a Sacrifice Outlet like Viscera Seer, we can keep sacrificing Kitchen Things, so we essentially get to gain infinite life with Kitchen Things and get an arbitrary number of scries with Viscera Seer, so we can put whatever card we want on top of our deck. And if we do the same, but instead replace Kitchen Things with Murderous Ratcap, we get to win the game on the spot, since Murderous Ratcap is a 4 mana 2 2 that when it enters the battlefield deals damage equal to its power to any target and also has Persist, so we can kill all the opponent's creatures with it and also go to the face and kill the opponent. So those are the main combos in the deck, then the rest of the deck is pretty straightforward. We've got some mana acceleration in the form of Birds of Paradise and Noble Hierarch to make sure we can cast all these cards in time. Then we've already covered Viscera Seer. Then we've got a one-off Scavenging Ooze, which is a powerful utility creature in the deck, providing graveyard hate that we can search up with Court of Calling, and also can gain us some life in the aggressive matchups. We have two copies of Duskwash Recruiter, which is part of the kill with infinite mana. And of course just a powerful creature by itself, since the activated ability can provide a little bit of card advantage in the grindier matchups. We've got our four Vizier of Remedies, which is part of all the combos, and the Voted Druid, which is just a fine mana creature by itself, and is also part of the infinite mana combo. Then we have four copies of Kitchen Things, which is just a fine creature by itself, and also part of the combo. We have four copies of Eternal Witness, which shines in more grindy matchups, as a 2-1 that can return a card from our graveyard back to our hand. And Eternal Witness is also a nice combo with Collected Company, 4 mana instant that lets us take a look at the top 6 cards of our library. We can reveal up to 2 creature cards with convert mana cost 3 or less and put them into play, and the rest goes on the bottom. So if we happen to find Eternal Witness with Collected Company, then we can return the Collected Company we just cast and get it back into our hand, thanks to Eternal Witness, and of course still get a second creature if we happen to find it. And that's a nice way to get ahead on cards and find the different combo pieces. Then we have a one-off Murderous Ratcap, just to be able to go infinite damage if infinite life is not good enough to beat our opponent. Then we have four copies of Court of Calling, which can also help us assemble the different combo pieces as an instant with Convoke, so we can tap creatures to help us pay for the mana cost, and search our library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less, and put it on the battlefield. And finally, two copies of Walking Ballista, for when we have infinite mana, this can deal infinite damage, and also just a fine creature by itself. Then taking a quick look at our mana base, we've got two basic forests, one basic plains, one basic swamp, alongside a godless shrine, two temple gardens, and two overgrown tombs, which we can search up with a total of eight fetchlands, four verdants, and four windswept heath. We've got three horizon canopy, which we can sacrifice if we're flooding out a bit to draw a card, 
and two Gavany Townships, which is also great in this deck as a great utility card to enhance our creatures and also works very nicely with our Persist creatures, since if you put a plus one plus one counter on a creature that has a minus one minus one counter, they cancel each other out. So if we have a Kitchen Finx with a minus one minus one counter, activate Township, then the minus one counter goes away, and we again have a fresh Kitchen Finx that can persist once again. Then going over the sideboard, you'll notice a lot of one-off creatures, since we can search them up with our Court of Calling, so we kind of have a lot of silver bullets we can search up. We also have two copies of Path to Exile against creature decks, a Voice of Resurgence, which shines against blue control decks. Frex and Revoker can also be a versatile answer to Planeswalkers, for example. Kasali Pride Mage to answer artifacts and enchantments. Core Firewalker against burn decks. Two Abrupt Decay to have removal that can also deal with hate cards. Two Stony Silence against artifact-based decks. One Combal, which shines against storm decks and other burn decks. Even Mind Sensor to mess up search effects like the Scapeshift deck. We have a Reclamation Sage as an additional answer to artifacts and enchantments, an Idol of Rhetoric against combo decks, and a Sync Collector against combo and control decks. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, this hand seems fine. Got some Acceleration, Druid plus Ballista, so if we find Vizier, we have the kill. And some Resiliency, thanks to Eternal Witness. Turn 1 Steam Vents, untapped, in 2, Serum Visions. The Storm deck, if this is Storm, is probably faster than we are. And if it's a control deck, then uh, I guess we have Eternal Witness, which is fine. We'll see. Alright, Noble Hierarch, I guess a slight upgrade over Birds. So let's see if they're on Storm or something else. Basic Islands. And there's a Baral. Alright, so we are up against Storm. Alright, so... We'll just have to try and assemble our combo as soon as possible here. So we probably want to play Devoted Druids, and we can also play a Birds of Paradise, and have access to quite a bit of mana. Let's get a Godless Shrine, I think. And I guess next turn we could also cast a Ballista for 3 to kill Baral. So that's a play we could make. If our opponent has a Grape Shot here, they could definitely do some damage killing most of our mana creatures there's goblin electromancer so they've got redundant mana creatures so killing one of them doesn't really accomplish a whole lot and another eternal witness opponent could also still cast the gifts and given end of turn here and kill us on the following turn and there's not much we can do about it since ballista for three doesn't really stop that so my guess is we just play kitchen things and then play Eternal Witness getting back Windswept Heath and try to go on the beatdown plan, hope they don't have it. And uh, next turn we could also activate Gavany Township, which does start dealing quite a bit of damage. Alright, we'll say go. And that's a Gifts Given end of turn, so that's going to be able to kill us on the following turn here. So our opponent can get some rituals, pass in flames, and then make a whole bunch of mana, cast gifts again, eventually get a grape shot. And that's gonna be the end of it. So what do we give them? Doesn't really matter. Suppose we put the rituals there. So thinking about our sideboard, we do get to bring in Kambal, we get to bring in Idol of Rhetoric. So we do have some tools, Sync Collector is also fine. So our matchup should improve after sideboard, and we definitely had a window here where we could potentially kill our opponent on turn 3, since they did let us untap with Devoted Druid, so if we went Vizier into infinite mana, we could have won the game as well. So the decks are mostly gold fishing, but there's a little bit of interaction, especially after sideboard. We also get to pick up some removal spells to deal with the mana creatures. So sideboarded games should be more interesting. So our opponent is going through the motions, and if you don't exactly know what's happening here, I recommend watching the Spike Sunday episode where we covered Gifts Storm, so you get to watch the deck from our perspective, and uh, get to follow along as we combo kill our opponents. So our opponent with a Gifts, finding another Gifts, some Rituals and a Grape Shot. So we'll put the Grape Shot and the Gifts in the graveyard. So our opponent just making a bunch of mana with their Rituals. Eventually they'll cast another Passing Flames, 
and then cast a Grape Shot to kill us. So Infinite Life is good enough to beat the Storm deck, since they can deal infinite damage with their Grape Shots, so we can probably afford to cut our Murderous Ratcap in this matchup. And our opponent's also going to be picking up some more creature removal spells after sideboard. So we'll have to see how we want to approach the matchup after sideboard, since we've got a, a lot of cards to bring in, but not exactly clear which cards we should be taking out. We can maybe shave some number of Eternal Witnesses, although if our opponent does go on the removal plan after sideboard, then Eternal Witness can be pretty valuable. Alright, so now our opponent can just flash back a Passing Flames and then cast two Grape Shots from their graveyard. And that's gonna be it. So there's Grape Shot number one, and Grape Shot number two following shortly here. Alright, I think our opponent has showed us enough here. So let's go to sideboarding, where, as we've mentioned, we've got a few cards we're interested in here. Sync Collector, Cumball, Eidolon, then Abrupt Decay and Path to Exile are considerations, although I'm less sure about those. And then what do we take out? Ratcap can go. I think we can cut at least one Eternal Witness, if not two. Since if the opponent's not interacting with removal spells, then Eternal Witness is just kind of a slow card that doesn't do a whole lot. So maybe if we're on the play we can get away not playing any Abrupt Decays, since we can try to be faster than the opponent, or just land one of these hate cards, which can also be pretty effective. And then maybe if we're on the draw, we should be bringing in Abrupt Decay, since our opponent's likely to go off before we do. So we need the interaction more. I think that makes sense. So we'll try this version on the play, and if there's a game three, we'll be bringing in the Abrupt Decays at least, maybe the Path as well. Although Path is not ideal since giving them a land is uh, still not great since they can definitely make use of it. Could also consider Voice of Resurgence, but I don't think it's very good. Sure, it makes cars like Remand worse, but they're probably taking those out anyway. And I guess what I didn't consider is even Mind Sensor, since Gifts and Given does search their library. So it could be that we actually should have brought in Avon Mind Sensor as well, since that makes Gifts and Given quite a bit worse. But they would still get the top four cards of their library, so it's not a dead card. Would like to be on the play. And yeah, I mean, this has the turn three kill, so we'll keep. So turn one Noble, turn two Devoted Druid, turn three Vizier with infinite mana and Walking Ballista. So if your opponent doesn't have any interaction next turn, they could be dead. So hopefully they just tap out for a mana creature here. So we could hit the opponent for one, or we could save ourselves a bit of damage with the Windswept Heath. I think saving ourselves damage is more relevant. So we'll play Devoted Druid, say go. And then hope for the best. We do have a backup Devoted Druid in case they kill the first one, but they're just going to tap out for Electromancer, so that's game. All right, let's get an Overgrown Tomb here. Can make white mana with... Noble Hark, and that's infinite mana. So I have to go through this for a while, and then we'll cast a giant Walking Ballista. All right, we could just cast a Walking Ballista for 10 here, and then hopefully our opponent concedes. And if they don't, then we can just make more mana and use the activated ability on Ballista. This is uh, in the hopes of saving some time. All right, our opponent scoops it up. So on to game three. So now we've said we wanted to bring in Abrupt Decays. So we'll be bringing those in. I still don't think we want Path, and then we have to consider Avon Mind Sensor. I don't know if it's actually very good against Gifts, since they can just reveal the top four cards. So I don't think Avon Mind Sensor is worth it here but maybe an expert on the deck can correct me. All right, so if we bring in the K on the draw, what do we take out? Could consider cutting a Kitchen Finks, and maybe we cut a Court of Calling, something like this. Could be that we should not have any copies of Eternal Witness, but after getting comboed out on turn three, the opponent might be bringing in more interaction, which makes Eternal Witness more desirable. This one, even though it has all the combo pieces, doesn't have any lands, so it's going to be difficult to keep this one. All right, we have a Cumball, which is probably good enough here. And don't really want Horizon Canopy. So we have a turn to Cumball thanks to our bird. 
probably just want to get an overgrown tomb here. And turn two Kambal might be able to stop our opponent from going off on turn three here if they play a turn two mana creature. And our opponent does have Electromancer on two, so good thing we had the bird to play Kambal on turn two. Since turn three Kambal could have also been too slow. Alright, so their opponent will first need to deal with Kambal before they can fully go off, but it's definitely possible that they can find a Lightning Bolt in the middle of their combo and still have enough life to work with and then kill Kambal and keep going off. So it's still very much possible that we die here, but Kambal makes it less likely. And our opponent is just going to abrade Kambal right away, so this would be a spot where Eternal Witness getting back Kambal would be useful. And the pieces of the puzzle. That's also pretty typical of uh, Storm sideboard plans. And our opponent reveals double grape shot pass in flames. So this game might go a little longer than the previous ones as our opponent takes double grape shot. So finding a scavenging ooze would be nice. Electromancer getting in for two. All right, Eidolon of Rhetoric is not bad here. So probably worth playing over Ballista. And at four toughness, it's uh, a lot more difficult to kill than our other creatures. So our opponent now limited to casting one spell a turn. Probably don't even want to block if our opponent attacks with the Electromancer, since that makes it more likely that they can kill the Eidolon. Yep. So we'll take two. And we should be able to win a fair fight here with Kitchen Finks and Vizier. I guess Vizier will die to Grape Shot, but then we still have Walking Ballista. Alright, Gavany Township, also an excellent way to win a fair fight. So let's play Township and... I guess we're attacking for one. And I think we want to run out uh, Kitchen Things before we start activating Townships. So we won't be able to add Ballista to the board since, of course, Eidolon affects both players. Alright, opponent could have a Gibson given end of turn here. And of course, the instant speed circumvents the Eidolon somewhat. So the Gifts might search different answers for the Eidolon so they can bounce it and then go off on the following turn. Definitely possible. And Gifts and Given finds Echoing Truth, Repeal, Wipe Away, Desperate Ritual, so no matter what they'll get a way to deal with Eidolon for a turn. So it's unclear what we should be giving them here. Don't really want to give them two bounce spells, but giving them a ritual is also kind of bad. I guess we give them Wipe Away and Repeal. Oh, I meant to put Repeal and Wipe Away in their hands, instead they ended up in the graveyard. So now they have a Baral. So we know they have Ritual and Echoing Truth in hand. And now two mana creatures. So they can end of turn Echoing Truth the Eidolon and then go off. And is there anything we can do about it? We can cast Walking Ballista X equals 2, which can only kill Electromancer. Alright, so I think we're dead, but we could represent having the combo by playing Vizier and then representing Court of Calling for 1 for Visras here which would then gain us infinite life. We're attacking with Kitchen Finks. Opponent takes it. Play Vizier. And say go. So your opponent's gonna bounce Eidolon end of turn. And yeah, we don't have the Court of Calling, sadly. So they probably get to go off now. They still have double Grape Shot in hand, so at the very least they can kill all our stuff. And we were pretty close to being able to sacrifice Rising Canopy to give ourselves a shot to draw into Card of Calling. And if we didn't attack with Kitchen Finks, we could cast Card of Calling for one, but the problem is we only have two green creatures, so we can't actually pay the green cost on Card of Calling. So that wasn't actually a play we had available. Opponent leads with Desperate Ritual, has another one. Yeah, they should have the kill now since they have Passing Flames in the graveyard. And a gifts and given as well. Suppose we could always sack canopy, but there's nothing for one mana we could draw into here. It's gonna be small grape shot to start with. There's a pass in flames. And now they can cast more rituals. I guess they don't have a ton of rituals in their graveyard, but I assume they still have enough here. Maybe they're limited by the amount of blue mana they have since they don't have Mana Morphos, but they do still have two untapped blue sources. So Gifts and Given. 
I don't think the misclick with the original gifts and given made a huge difference. Our opponent gets Bolt, Manamorphos, Ritual, Shivan Reef. So I don't think we want to give them the blue mana, so those will go to the graveyard. So they have Bolt and Ritual in hand still, alongside a Grape Shot. And Bolt to the face. So we're down to 11. And the Grape Shot. I guess they can still flash back the Grape Shot from the graveyard as well. And yep, there's another Grape Shot, and that's going to do it. All right, too bad. So you can kind of see how the hate cards are only a temporary solution since they can just bounce it and then keep going off. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. And yeah, this hand seems pretty decent. We've got infinite mana. Don't have anything to do with that infinite mana yet, but there's a lot of draws that uh, will change that in a hurry. So suppose we can just fetch a basic forest here. Save some life. Opponent with a Wooded Foothills, getting a Stomping Ground into Arbor Elf, so some sort of land destruction deck perhaps. And Court of Calling, alright, so we've got to kill if our Devoted Druid survives. So hopefully they just cast a Stone Rain here. Alright, Utopia Sprawl, so potentially 4 mana for the opponent here. So it could still be a land destruction deck, could still be a green devotion type deck. And acid moss, yep, that's fine. Alright, so we should have the kill here. Untap, play Vizier, Court of Calling, get Recruiter. Recruiter finds Ballista, and Ballista gets the job done. Alright, start making some mana. Alright, so we can Cord for 2. Get Duskwatch. And then we can start activating Duskwatch however many times we want. And find our Ballista. And there's Ballista right away. So hopefully they concede here and we don't have to go through this. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, so on to game 2 against Red Green, Land Destruction. So our opponent's going to be bringing in cards like Anger of the Gods, more removal spells most likely. So how do we want to approach this matchup? We're pretty well set up for the matchup, just try and be as lean and mean as possible. Infinite life should be enough, so I don't think we need the murder threat cap. Maybe we just want an abrupt decay to kill an early mana elf from the opponent. Or a Utopia Sprawl, maybe we want Sync Collector to get a removal spell out of their hand. That might be okay, can also get those stone rains. Should those be a problem? Yeah, I think we'll try this. Murderous Ratcap does speed up the combo in a practical way, since it takes fewer clicks to kill an opponent with Ratcap than it takes clicks to quote-unquote gain infinite life with Kitchen Things. And how about this hand? We don't have any mana creatures, so the Stone Rain effects could be more effective. We do have a fetch land to get a forest to play around Blood Moon. So I think this is keepable, mostly based on the company plus witness. But we could definitely get Stone Rained out of the game. Our opponent did mulligan, so they're pretty low on resources here. And it's unclear whether we should run out the fetch land right away. I guess we do, but we don't have to sacrifice it yet. Since ideally we want to get a basic forest to have a bit of insurance against Blood Moon, but we also don't want to sack it before we have to, since if they have a Stone Rain effect, then they uh, could kill the land we get. Walking Ballistas, I think we just play a Canopy and pass a turn, even though we could run out of Vizier. Again, to kind of play around those Stone Rain effects. And it's not like we have the combo in hand, so Vizier in play doesn't accomplish a whole lot. Opponent just hitting their land drops, that's fine. Another Canopy, so it's actually funny. All these Canopies and the Windswept Heath make it safe for opponent does target one of our lands with land destruction. We can just sack it in response to kind of mitigate the effect. And next turn we can cast a Company end of turn to still use our mana. Land 4 from the opponent. And Bloodbraid Elf, alright. See what it cascades into, Lightning Bolt. That's fine. Alright, so we actually don't mind drawing a basic forest. So I think we can wait on sacrificing the Windswept Heath here. Alright, find another one. So let's sack this 
I guess we should not have sacrificed yet since we're going to be playing the company in the opponent's turn anyway. Oh well, let's get a forest anyway. Play another Windswept Heath, say go. Got a little bit ahead of ourselves. So we could take three, we could cast the company right now. In case we, let's say, find a kitchen thing, so we might be okay blocking with it. I think I'm okay casting the company now. Don't want to take an infinite amount of damage from this elf. So another forest seems fine. Cast company. And these horizon canopies are also pretty painful. And what did we find? A vizier and a hierarch. Could also get the birds for the black mana. I guess that's more relevant. And do we trade? Vizier for Bloodbred Elf. We don't really mind doing so. Since we just want to trade resources given the two Eternal Witnesses we have in hand. And a ton of life taking three is kind of sketchy. Alright, so made some trades. Let's see what they have. Hunt Master of the Fells. Alright. That's okay. Should be able to keep it from transforming. And a Birds of Paradise. Alright, so opponent's got one card left in hand. Could also consider Ballista X equals 2 or even 3 to kill the Huntmaster. Opponent having one card in hand, maybe that's fine. Since we wouldn't be able to Eternal Witness Company this turn anyway. So then the question becomes Ballista for 2 or for 3. Ballista for 3 would cost us 2 life. So maybe Ballista for 2 is enough. And then we could also play another Birds of Paradise, for example, or Vizier to trade for the Wolf. Alright, I think we'll start with... Ballista for two and then kill Huntmaster and then we'll play another birds. Could have also played Ballista for three to kill their birds, cut them off double red in case of like an Inferno Titan. That's also a possibility. So we'll take two from the wolf and now we can Eternal Witness Company which is going to be pretty good here. Alright, Kitchen Things also buys us a lot of time, especially with the Vizier. But I think we're still into Witness Targeting Company. And we can definitely wait until end of turn to do this. So we'll just pass it back. And then we're pretty likely to find a combo next turn between the Company and the two combo pieces we already have in hand. Opponents attacking with the wolf. We're pretty happy to trade here. So our opponent's got two cards in hand. What's it gonna be? They might also be holding up some interaction at instant speed here for the combo. But that's okay, since we've got another witness, so we can play a pretty grindy game here. And we find Vizier and Duskwatch. So we get to untap, and we can attack for four, play another witness. Could also start activating township, but I think we'd rather get more stuff in play first. The alternative would be playing a kitchen things, but I think another witness makes more sense here. Get by company. I don't think we need to play another bird, since then we might be overextending into an anger of the gods situation. And it would also cost us one life. So there's Anger of the Gods, so we want to make sure to float some mana. And that's fine. Don't think we want to activate Duskwatch, I think we're better off casting a company end of turn here. Or well, after the Anger resolves, since we need to make use of the floating mana. So now we'll cast a company. We are down to 5, so we do have to be a little careful here, but Kitchen Finks is going to help. So don't hit our spot here, especially with the Gavany Township still available. And another company to draw. I guess we can cast Company Main Phase, since if we find Visceras here, we have infinite life. And there it is. And even a Sync Collector and a Devoted Root, so we can kind of pick and choose here. I guess we'll take Sync Collector just to double check that they don't have anything. And... Let's see what they're working with. Just a forest. Alright, 
so now we can play Vizier. Guess we'll attack first for five, and then we can start getting infinite life, and hopefully they concede to that. So a sack Kitchen Finks. And Company on top is fine. So we can keep doing this over and over. And our opponent scoops it up, all right, so they can beat infinite life. And that's the game, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand's playable, but very unexciting. Don't have any of our combo pieces, except for maybe the search effects. But uh, no acceleration, so pretty slow out of the gates. Think this is a mulligan. All right, well, this seems like a better hand. Bottom the land here. We've got some acceleration, so we're a lot more threatening out of the gate. Turn one birds. Turn two devoted druid. Point with basic islands. Into Nifmagus Elemental. All right, so some sort of creature combo deck. Let's get a Godless Shrine. Run out Visra Seer and the Voted Druid. So if we were to top deck Vizier, we win the game by gaining infinite life, which is presumably enough. So we don't actually care too much about the Devoted Druid here, but we're also just going to go on the beatdown plan with Cavani Township in a turn or two. Favorite Hoplite, so another one of those creatures that rewards the opponent for going all in on one creature. And if Magus gets in there, don't think we're blocking. So blue-white Nivmegus deck. Haven't seen that before. So we know what uh, white is for, we know what the blue is for. All right, so we're probably just playing Kitchen Things here. And saying go. Keep our Gavany Township hidden for now. And uh, we're pretty happy to block with our Kitchen Things if they give us a chance. It's gonna be a Triton Tactics. I see. So they can still eat the spell with Nifmegus' ability, but still get the benefit from the heroic trigger. So that's a way to kind of gain incremental advantage with Nifmegus Elemental and their heroic creatures. So I think we're blocking the Hoplite to force the opponent to target it with something this turn, even though we could potentially prevent more damage by blocking the Nifmegus Elemental. All right, it's going to be Emerge Unscathed. So against protection with rebound, that's fine. And now we can sack the Kitchen Things with Viscera Seer's ability and get a scry. So your opponent contemplating whether they want to exile the spell with Nifmegus, they decide not to, so next turn they'll get the rebound. So Kitchen Things comes back, and we get to scry and look for Vizier of Remedies. Don't need another Devoted Druid. So Court of Calling, Collected Company, those are all good draws. All right, there we go. So we can Court of Calling for two, get Vizier, and then we need to make sure to still be able to use Township to put a counter on the Kitchen Things. So we can Court for two, get Vizier, and then we can still play Township, and we have the white mana as well to activate it, so Kitchen Things gets a plus one plus one counter, and then we can start getting infinite life, which presumably is enough here. I see Spell Pierce, so we can pay for it, putting a counter on the Druid, untapping it, and then using Godless Shrine for example, or we could use the birds, doesn't really matter, as long as we have one white mana left here, since if we sacrifice Kitchen Things with a minus one minus one counter on it, then it's not going to persist back, so we need to make sure to erase it with the Township first. So we'll make a green, and then pay for the Spell Pierce. And as soon as the court resolves, we'll have infinite mana. So we'll pay two for Spell Pierce. I guess we should have let the Spell Pierce resolve and then pay for it, instead of letting the opponent eat it with Elemental, but it doesn't matter here, and we can always use the extra mana that's floating anyway. So no big deal. So we'll get Vizier. And now we can untap this an infinite number of times, activate Township, and then our Kitchen Things will be able to persist once again. All 
Alright, so now we can start sacking. And hopefully our opponent's kind enough to concede here, since presumably they can deal infinite damage. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, so on to sideboarding against Blue White, Niv Magus Elemental. So I'm assuming Path Exile and Abrupt Decay are reasonable inclusions here. Uh, Sync Collector might be good, Cabal might be good, Eidolon might be good. I think those are the main considerations. And what do we take out? I don't think we need Ratcap since Infinite Life should be enough. Ooze doesn't seem necessary from the looks of it. And I could see cutting some number of Eternal Witness since it doesn't seem like a very grindy matchup. So the question is, do we want Sync Collector, Cabal or Eidolon? The opponent doesn't need to cast very many spells to make Niv Magus into a threat. And we do have chum blockers with Kitchen Finks, so it's only a worry if they can make their creatures unblockable or give protection like we saw. So my guess is Sync Collector is going to be worth it and probably better than a Witness. But I'm less sold on Cabal and Eidolon, but we might reevaluate after uh, game two here. Uh, I guess we could also consider a Revoker named Niv Magus Elemental but they could just easily win with their Hoplite instead. So I don't think that's a great plan. So yeah, we'll, we'll try this and see what happens. All right, well, we have infinite mana with this hand on turn three. So that seems like a keep, and we've got the cord to find our Duskwatch Recruiter. So if they can't interact, they would be dead on turn three. We even have the backup Devoted Druid, so pretty stacked hand. Of course, we don't exactly know what the opponent's deck is all about. They could surprise us here. They do have the turn one Niv Magus. Let's play a tap Temple Garden, ship it back. And there's a Hoplite, so a pretty similar start to last game. And a Bio Shift. So they're gonna eat it right away with Niv Magus. So very aggressive start. But they'll need some interaction here since they won't be able to deal 20 in time here, and even a triple Devoted Druid. Our opponent could have cards like Dismember, Gutshot, who knows. Spell Pierce won't do it since we'll have infinite mana when we cast Court of Calling. So we're taking 5 down to 12. And another Heroic Creature, that's fine. And they ship it back. And they've got 2 mana up. Well, we're just gonna run out the Vizier here, see what happens. That works, so let's attempt to make infinite mana. So we'll cast Court for two, get our Duskwatch, and then we can start activating our Duskwatch and find our Walking Ballista. We told our opponent we were going to find Walking Ballista with our recruiter, and they were gracious enough to concede. All right, so that's going to do it for today. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.